If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And by all means, please feel free to share this video. Hello everybody, welcome back to our Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today we're gonna to take a look at the mythical woods. But before that, this video is brought to you by Farmer Ben and Bobby W. Thank you for being farm barons. So the mythical woods map can found at the farming simulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to Mythical Woods. This is a fictional map where there is a mythical thing happening on the map and there is some white orbs that you can collect that are floating in some random areas on the map at night. This map features approximately five cell points, all in-game products are sellable and platinum edition fill types as well. And for that to happen, you do need to have the platinum edition DLC. There are seven fields for any sort of farming. Now those are very, very small fields because this map is predominantly either a wilderness style map or a forestry focused map. This map has a bunch of forest and empty land for forestry and building. A village where you can mow people's lawns for some and some people walking in an old village in winter you can plow snow on the roads there are eight collectibles that you can only find at night a sheep farm with custom buildings new field types that can be used in many productions included with the map a coal mine where you can dig up new materials like coal gravel clay etc hope you enjoy the map and look out for those white orbs now this map has no required mods, so let's go ahead and load in. We are gonna be using the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you load this map up in farm management or start from scratch, you will find the main starting farm is completely void of all buildings. You do have your starting machinery in all game modes though. In addition, if you do load this system up on a low-end system, for example, I use a system with AMD integrated graphics. I found I was getting a solid 60 frames per second wherever I was on this map. So even though we do have a ton of trees on this map, performance is not a problem. Let's go ahead and take a look at that PDA. So this is, as I mentioned, either a wilderness map or a forestry map or a common therefore of. The darker areas here on the PDA represent dense forest. Meanwhile, the lighter green areas are gonna represent a lot of grassland with some light small trees intermixed. So here we are looking at what I'm calling our grassland. And then we have the dense forest around us. Take a look at our lands overview. We start off by owning farmland ID one. That is going to be buyable for $90,880 in any alternate game mode. We have a farmhouse, which is a log cabin here in the woods. And then we have the main starting farm right here with our sheep barn. Everything else on this map is buyable. The mine, which was mentioned in the description, is that farmland ID5 that can be bought for $365,000. There's a bit of forest and marsh land up here in farmland ID6. Other areas to note are that we do have a town down here with some sell points and production points for $64,000. And we also have a train that runs east to west and it is gonna also have sell points. This map does include all the standard crops available to us in FS22, in addition to the premium expansion crops of red beets, carrots, and parsnips. Let's go and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is gonna show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, what fields are included, then lastly, how much is that farmland gonna cost us? Now we can take a look at our field calculator screen and see how big each of these seven fields are. As I said earlier, they are fairly small, ranging in size from 0.11 hectares all the way up to the biggest field, which is the one we own at the start, at 0.57. Of course, these are just predefined fields. You're free to dig up the land and create your own fields, should you so wish. 
Now this map does have the standard generic soil map that is a part of the precision farming mod. Given the sizes of these fields and the quantity of them, I'm not gonna go ahead and expose the soil map because we're really not gonna see a whole lot of information because so little bit of the map would be exposed. But do note that this is the standard generic soil map. In addition, we have the standard growth calendar available to us here on this map. And we see those listed here. Looking now through our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us in FS22, as well as our animal outputs of eggs, wool, and milk, and our silage, hay straw, and grass. We do have the ability to sell all of our base game production items as well. All those are going to be able to be sold here at the storage bay. Now, if we look here, we do not have a buyer or a seller for lime, but that is a little bit misleading because this map has some production that is built in and that production can basically buy the lime that you have. In addition, we do have a stone cell point in the stone factory or the storage bay. In addition, this map has additional fill types and productions in asphalt, coal, limestone, dirt, gravel, sand, iron, cement, stone powder, gold, bricks, crude oil, and clay. In addition to that, we do have the ability to sell our washed root crops from the farm production pack, as well as our platinum expansion production items. Of course, you do need to have the platinum expansion enabled in order for that to happen. In addition, we have the premium expansion productions and crops. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of our separated manure, as well as our hay and straw pellets if we are paying, playing with straw harvest. We start out with a decent listing of starting machinery here on this wilderness map. All of his own, none of his least, and is all fairly well maintained. We do have a sheep barn, but we do not have any sheep at the start. This map does have contracts on the some six fields that are not owned. This map does have a stone factory pre-placed as far as the production, but we do not own any production chains at the start. And we do have our eight mysterious collectibles. Those collectibles do show up at night. I was successful in going around and collecting all eight. Now, before we dive in too much more, I want to show you the placeables that we have on this map because we do have some placeables that we can put down that are additional factories. So in build mode, we have a cement, cement and asphalt factory that have been placed for $150,000. We also have a crude oil production We have a gold production. And we have a brick factory. So those are four productions that are included with the map, but are not pre-placed at the start. We go ahead and take a look at our ground textures. We have a fairly limited listing of ground textures. And then we have our standard plants and trees so we have our cement factory here with our dump point and our pallet spawn point we have our crude oil factory our dump point we interact by icon we have our pallet point here we have our dump point and then for our gold facility, we have our dump point and our interactive point and our pallet spawn point. So let's go ahead and take a look at our productions. I also want to go ahead and buy this. That way we own the stone factory as well. So we have our cement and asphalt factory. 
That is going to input sand, lime, stone powder, diesel, and gravel. And it's going to output cement or asphalt. We have our crude oil production, which is going to input sand and water. And that is then going to output crude oil. Or we could just use water to get crude oil. We have our gold production. It's going to require water, dirt, and coal to get gold. Our brick factory is going to be water, clay, and sand to get bricks. And our stone factory is going to input stone, diesel, and water. And it is going to output coal, lime, limestone, dirt, gravel, sand, iron, and stone powder. So several of the fill types that are going to be required in the previous four factories are generated here in the stone factory. In addition to that, we do have the mine where we can collect lots of loose material, assuming we own the land. So down here at the stoner factory, we have our dump point where we've seen our interactive point around the back. And on the side, we have our fill pipe for our bulk contents. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We're gonna start out with the McCormick T8 631 VT drive, the Fent 724 Vario, and the Massey Ferguson 7S210 medium tractors. We have reduced for our top liner 4090H harvester that is paired up with the 4090H grain header and header trailer. We have our Mahindra retriever, as well as our Rudolph DK280RL trailer. That is gonna be a Dolly trailer. We have the HR4040 Power Harrow, and that is paired up with the Venta 4030 Cedar. We have the 4140L Side Mower, as well as the Alpine Hit 4.4H Tether, the Top 342 Wind Rower, the Boss Alpine 251 Forage Wagon, and the 3300 kilogram front weight. With respect to mods and DLCs, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. Just gonna quickly tab over to our starting farm location. And again, this location is completely void of buildings in any alternate game mode. Now I did try to sell these structures in new farm mode earlier, and I was successful in getting rid of the sheds the silo, and the sheep pen. But what I was not successful in getting rid of was the deco elements. And let me go in here into build mode because I want to show you what happens. If we click on these deco elements, they come up blue, and they just say farmhouse. So they don't offer me to sell anything, but the others, they do prompt for a sell. Now in farm manager mode, none of this exists nor do the deco elements. So I would say if you are maybe thinking about restructuring this area, just go ahead and start in farm manager mode because you do have your starting machinery in that game mode, just the buildings are vacant. So we do have 25 sheep here, we have our food trough, and we have our wool spawn point on the side. Now, something I did not try earlier, and I wanna just go ahead and try it now, is that we have a log cabin. And inside our log cabin, well, we have our sleep trigger, and we have our wardrobe trigger. But what I did not try was to sell the log cabin, because it does pop up and it does say farmhouse. Let's sell the log cabin. And now let's see if our deco elements are gone. No, they are not. Okay, well, there goes that theory. So these things are still going to be stuck around. In addition, you do see that there are utility poles running through the wilderness area. These do have collisions. So if you are going to be creating fields, both the low power and the high power utility poles do have collisions on this map. Something else to note is if we follow this road over by field seven, there are two barns and what appears to be a silo. As best as I can tell, these are simply deco elements 
because the silo has no triggers. Even if we own the land, the silo is completely useless as best as I can tell. So I believe that this area is merely decorative. If this map does get an update, I would love this to be sellable. That way you could buy this land and clear this out. And I would love for the silo to actually be usable just in case someone wants to buy this and make use of this area as a farm as well as possibly this area up the road as a second farm, maybe for a wilderness multiplayer gameplay. That would be kind of interesting. Let's get a little bit of altitude here. So we take a little bit of a look around. You can see the vastness of the wilderness area and then the dense density of these forested areas. Here we have the town that was mentioned in the description. We do have folks kind of walking around here and we can buy this area or these little areas again, as was described with respect to mowing people's yards and clearing the roads with respect to snow. Now I will tell you, and maybe it's going to be a spoiler, but hope not that well, one of the mysterious aspects of this map is that there has been a, well, let's just say that there has been a meteor strike, a meteor landing, if you will. Right in through here. And this area, well, it might be worth coming back here later in the day. Just saying. So here we have our starting farm. We have that farm that I mentioned over there. What would be nice if it was a farm by the small field seven. As I mentioned, we have a train that runs east to west, and that is going to be a train cell point. We have the train coming right now. Over to the left, those are the productions that we placed earlier on in the video. So there we have our train. We have our vehicle shop. Let's go ahead and pick up a second retriever. Really large area for our vehicles to spawn. No issues whatsoever in being able to get this stuff out of the yard. Then we have our dealer trigger right there. And we do also have a fuel point. In addition to the dealer, we have our animal dealer. We have our storage bay cell point, and it's going to be a very common cell point for most things. We have a railroad silo to transfer product to and from the train, as well as store our grain and root crops. With our dump point and fill point for the trailer, and our dump point and fill point there for our train. We have a rent train trigger there as well. We continue easterly along the railroad track. We're going to come over here to our sawmill. This is not a functional sawmill. This is simply a wood cell point. So you have the dump station there. We also have a dump station here for our logs. So that's going to be for selling wood chips and then our logs. Going north from that cell point, we have then our stone factory. We talked about this already with our dump point, our interactive icon, and our fill point around the back. Continuing north from there, 
We have a small building site here, or a clearing. Another point of interest, fairly center to the map, is a castle ruin. Might be worth exploring. You know what I mean. Then we have our marsh area. And then finally, we have our mine, where we're going to find a substantial amount of product available for us to collect and make use of, either at the stone factory or one of the other placeable factories that we've already talked about. And there you can see those fill types spawning in. So we have our dirt, we have gravel, here we have coal. This, I believe, is going to be maybe sandstone. Sand. And then this is something else. Let's go back here to our productions. So we've already identified coal, dirt, gravel, sand, iron. So that is most likely the iron fill type there. And you need to obviously own this land in order to dig up and make use of these collectibles or these fill types. So with respect to our scoring system, we're going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such because we have, well, we have the stone factory pre-placed and we have four other factories that we could put down for a total of five custom factories included with this map. With respect to sell points, being able to sell all rebase same crops, animal outputs, and productions. We are once again going to be giving the map a full point there as well, because we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops, productions, animal outputs, as well as a bonus with the platinum and premium DLCs, as well as the farm production pack. With respect to the farms being customizable, the main farm is mostly customizable, but we are going to deduct a quarter of a point with respect to the deco elements being stationary or basically being unsellable in new farmer mode. If you do think that you are going to want to redo this area, by all means, fire this map up in farm manager mode because one, you'll get more money at the start. Two, you'll be able to buy this land for a fairly cheap penny. Because again, farmland 91 is buyable for $90,880. And then you'll be able to place down your own buildings without having to worry about these deco elements that are stationary or fixed to the map. With respect to buildings where appropriately are using the new texturing technique, while this map does have some custom buildings, they are, as best as I can tell, indeed using the new texturing technique. So therefore, we're going to give the map a full point there. And overall, all of the triggers that are pre-placed on the map as well as the triggers with respect to our additional placeable items i feel that they are all clearly indicated as to where they are and what they are for so we are also going to give the map a full point there that's going to wrap this map up with a score of 4.75 out of 5. i would love to know your all's thoughts down in the comments below with respect to this map and what do you think of his previous maps because this map author has i believe i counted up eight different maps most of them are forestry focused in some way and until next time happy farming